but since then, you know, and we still got the two, the two big ones, and then we'll show you in a minute. If, if you stay wow, still, well, you can yeah. see they're like classic guys. Oh, they're lovely, aren't they? They love anything green. They're, we put broccoli, peas. Yeah. Um, what is going on YouTube and welcome back to the channel. Now I've just got to this incredible property, check this out. Look at the views here. Now this is SA Cichlid's house and I've just had a look, they've got a fish room and a uh, massive tank in their lounge. So let's go check it out. Check out this tank guys. What's going on? So, what's your two names? Andre and Jade from SA Cichlids. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This Look at this. To our humble abode. This is amazing. South American kingdom. Let's come here, buddy. So, guys, what size tank have we got then? So the tank is six by two by two and a half. We oh. had a six by two by two before. Spoke to Domat. ND Aquatics and said that he wanted to upgrade the tank. Um, he massively helped us out, massively looked after us, so we can't recommend him enough. But yeah, so he wanted to make us this tank, six by two by two and a half. It's got literally everything on it. Everything's opti white, back and sides, opti white, sliders. Um, and it does make a massive difference oh yeah, having the opti white. It's like yeah. a crazy difference. You can see it when you look down, down here, can't you? You know with opti white, if we look yeah. down there, you see yeah, one with yeah. the eye and it's really yeah, black yeah, yeah. isn't it you know but also i think the, the glass gives like a green tint to it whereas mm. this like really like shows you the fish's natural colors and well, well see when you look down there it just looks like water doesn't it literally yeah wow it's lovely isn't it it's clear isn't it yeah it's really nice so, yeah. and we don't have anything in our filters like carbon or purity or anything like that we literally 50 percent water changes every five days mm. big uv sterilizer and yeah, just I, I tell you what though, UV sterilizer makes a massive difference to water quality. Like if we ever turn it off, you can tell the difference. Mm. It just helps clear like all of the kind of um, particles and stuff. But obviously it helps with bacteria loads, parasites, anything like that. Well, we quarantine all the fish anyway, but mm. it just helps kind of keep everything clean. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely would recommend. I mean, the one we've got in here is Mammoth. I think it's, is it 75 for? Yeah, so we've got um, twin FX6s on here, so we've got one there which is just that's basically all bio home ultimate media yeah yeah and then obviously we've got our ink bird heater controller in the back okay yeah, you can see. and then on the other side is all of our uv sterilizer filtration i like how you've got a light in there yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's well handy isn't it just yeah. got ikea lights so yeah. if I turn that off, you might actually see the light on the UV. I can see it, yeah. Yeah, so but it's that, but that's it's actually that a pong grade. Because, right, right, yeah. Because the flow on the FX6 is so high. Yeah, it can't like, pick up with the little ones, no. Yeah, with, with both the filters, it's doing like 6,000 litres an hour. Yeah, yeah. But what we do is, is firstly, like, yeah, get a really strong light and a big UV unit so the water's in there longer. And we just turn the outlet on that um, filter down a little bit just to slow the flow. Um, flow yeah, because the, the valves are adjustable, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. 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 Can't go more than about forty percent because obviously it will end up knackering the pump. But mm. yeah, we just just to, to get maximum penetration. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I see you um, changed all the pipe work as well because it normally comes with like the black yes, stuff, yeah, doesn't yeah. it? So when we got the new pipe, I went and bought loads and loads of pipe and just to, because inside it's like yeah, corrugated. Um, yeah, yeah. And um, after the time, it just all gets caught. It yeah. does, and when you turn it off and turn it back on, it goes, I mean, it pumps all back in the tank, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So oh, now, right. yeah, now so. we've got the straight pipe, it doesn't do it, um, yeah. Because it doesn't get stuck anywhere, so because yeah, that used to annoy us every time we change the filters, it would be like brown. Yeah, and it's like, like oh, it doesn't even look like I've done it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, definitely the, the pipes um, help that. So, um, we've obviously got, um, we've only got a 500 watt heater on this because, um, to be fair, our house keeps it quite warm. Yeah. And then we've got the yeah, I mean, bird. You can see that the, the, the actual heater is off. Mm. I mean, to be fair, with all the weather, it's been a. Uh, yeah, I haven't been heated on for about three no, weeks. They've been, they've been getting used at all, though. Uh -huh. You know, I, I tell a lot of people when I go to their houses and stuff, the house stays like 20, 21. Yeah, yeah, it does, you yeah. don't really need heat sometimes, you know, yeah. even in the winter. So we, we run these guys fairly warm because the wire is like it. Mm. So um, it normally sits at least 28. Yeah. Um, so yeah. 
and then we've, we've just got a little wave maker. We, do, we used to have bigger wave makers, but the pandas don't like the flow. Oh, yeah. So we just use them to sort of get the stuff off the sand and things, but the geos do a really good job in the, all the quarries and stuff anyway. Mm. Um, so we, we don't actually need that much power heads, we just mainly get the water surface. Yeah, you probably need. won't see them until we start feeding, but we've got about 40 um, super short eye hyphen. Yeah. They're all hiding in the rocks, so you don't really know them. They'll come yeah. down. Well, <laughs> your sand bed's immaculate, isn't it? It just looks yeah, amazing, yeah. doesn't it? You know what, the only yeah. annoying thing is we have a raw panak, and they're like carpenters, <laughs> yeah. and they just chew yeah. up oh, all no, the wood, oh, and no. they just for England, yeah. so that normally if you see any, it's from him. Yeah, oh, the buggers, aren't they? I've been messing around with all the outlet angles and the wave maker, and I think I've now annihilated all of the sort of dead spots. Mm. So the filters does eventually pick it up, but especially having all the geos in there, they just hit for sand anyway. That's why, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we've got quite a few species in there, haven't we, Jade? Yeah, so we've got. <laughs> yeah, do you um, want to talk? Yeah, talk from. How many have we, I forget how many pandas we've got in there, three, four, five, I think we've got seven. Seven. Uh, Panduaru, which obviously they're, um, they are pretty, um, they're pretty hard to keep, I have to be honest. Mm. Um, they're pretty shy, they're hiding at the back now. Yeah. yeah. They'll yeah. come out when I feed them. But right? they're, they're so intelligent, they're really personable, they're a bit like Oscars, like once they get to know you and they, they trust you, they're, they're really like friendly and they're dead funny to watch. Mm. Um, they have like their completely own communication. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they are they can be sensitive. So I mean, we've we've done pretty well with them. We did have a bit of an incident. You can see that like some, he's hiding at the minute. But the the bigger one, we had five massive ones, and um, I mean they just looked in incredible in the tank together. But we um, we bought some more smaller ones and we made a very very rookie mistake. And yeah. We did quarantine them, but for not for long enough. And we didn't realise that Waru can get cross contamination like discus. Yeah. And so unfortunately, we had quite a bad case of cross contamination. I mean, we managed to get it under control. Luckily, um, you know, we had some antibiotics and we used salt and other things. But we did lose, unfortunately, our two two biggest ones. Yeah. So it's always the ones you don't want to lose, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's just such a shame, isn't it? Um, but it's all part of the hobby, isn't it? Really, you know. Yeah. yeah you know, lessons learned, learned, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but since then, you know, and we still got the two the two big ones, and then we'll show you in a if, minute. If you stay wow, still, well, you can see. Yeah. Uh, classic oh, they're lovely, aren't they? They love anything green. They, we put broccoli, peas, yeah. um, courgette, cucumber. Look lettuce. how clear their heads are as well. Look, no problems yeah, at all, is it? Immaculate. Yeah, but the, so the plants in here, like there's two top ones, obviously are fake. The bottom ones, they're yeah, really the, the two top. Uh, the, the two top ones, we've got a shout out to JW Tanks. Yeah, one. yeah. <laughs> Legend for, for finding those. Us, yeah. yeah. Um, but the bottom ones are real, but they're, they're in like a pond grass and because they're so coarse. I mean, they're not actually supposed to be fully submerged, but they do They fire. do really well, yeah. Hmm. Um, but it's the only plant that will last longer than like three minutes with them. Well, cause when, I, when I first walked in here, I thought they were like a perfect artificial plant. Yeah. yeah no, and they, they just look, it looks artificial, but which is good really, because it yeah. stays so clean, doesn't it? So we, um, I mean, you can get them from most main heads, but obviously we're down the road from main head, mm. Farnham, so Marcus and Paul always look after us and they order it in for us as and when hmm. we need yeah. it. Because we do have to replace they will eat they, it. They don't normally stop but because it. it's so coarse, it takes them like, it probably takes them maybe a month to, to chew it all down, mm. whereas you put any other plant in there, honestly, it, it would be gone Java by the time you've left. You'd yeah, it it bits. And they'd have it in their mouth before it touches the floor. Yeah, well, they think well, it's... You've it's seen what it's like oh, the lettuce. They think it's that, don't they? <laughs> but yeah, so this big one here, that's the female. We had four that size unfortunately we lost well we we lost one of them pretty soon after we did get them they don't travel well no. such a yeah. shame isn't it yeah but, then, but yeah. we've we do got some more actually wait a second no i'll correct myself we didn't lose four we lost we lost two yeah, we just lost, yeah, yeah. We just lost two. But to be fair, we we split the um the import of that that panda batch with other people, a couple of guys we know in Wales, and we weren't the only pro person who had the problem. They, they both of those had the exact same thing as us, um, and I think they lost all but one yeah. or something. So we were really lucky to just have lost two out of um out of, yeah. Yeah. Nine, yeah. yeah luckily, back. we had the right meds at the right time. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, they're, they're in a so. they're in a proper home now, aren't they? Look at them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. It just, it just goes to show, like, even you know, when you think you know what you're doing, you can make mistakes. Oh, yeah, of course. That you honestly, don't know honestly, guys, I, I make massive mistakes sometimes, you know, I, I do stupid things. And you know what it is normally from like rushing? Yeah. About, oh, they'll be fine, they'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I will hold my hand up, I was like, babe, let's just get the pandas in the tank, I want to get them out. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> literally, 
24 hours they were completely covered in slime coat. And I know, and then, and then you've, got to, you've got to take all your scape apart and then you've got to take, yeah. move, try and get the other fish out of the way. And I know it's so stressful, yeah. isn't it? But and then we've got Geophagus Svenny's oh, yeah. in there. Got four of those. We have a breeding pair, but they, um, I think it's a bit busy for them at the moment, so we will <laughs> eventually get them out into, the, into a breeding tank. Mm. Um, we've also got Satanaperca Lilith, these guys here. These are actually stupidly rare. I don't know of anybody in the country that has any, so if anybody is watching this and has them, please message us. Cause, yeah, message us on Instagram. Yeah, they're got incredible. A lot of questions. Um, and we've got um, Geophagus Altifrons. Um, Two of those. They're all just so pretty, aren't they? Yeah. Look, at, look at the blues yeah. on these guys. I'm going to try and convert you to getting some geos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But this is a great thing about geos. Is like, well, firstly, I think you know, there's there's so much iridescence on them, mm. colour, but you can match all these different species and they all get on perfectly fine. And the, the colour var variety and the shape variety, like, they make great like community tanks, which is exactly what we wanted. Yeah. yeah. I think eventually we, we've got some more pandas next door. We'll show you. So eventually, this will pretty much become a panda tank. We might just keep the fennies in there. But um, I think when. We don't want to keep a species only tank because to us it gets boring. This is our, you know, TV. Yeah, yeah, it's a community tank, isn't it? Um, yeah. So it's great having a different Sometimes species. Sometimes they don't in. always get on, do they? Especially when, when somebody decides to start breeding, it turns into Yeah, chaos. they have little scraps yeah. and stuff, yeah. but they're cichlids at the end of the day. That's right, yeah. Trust me, everyone does, you know. Everyone has fish, even like angelfish and things like that. Yeah, I know yeah, they're cichlids yeah. as well, but they, people have tear-ups with them, don't they? There's about 15 um, Colombian tetras in there as well, yeah. just to have a nice shoaling fish and mm. also we've got a satana perca papatera in there oh yeah he's uh he's down there uh, they're also a bit stupidly rare oh yeah he's fairly grown he, now um, he uh he actually came from a fish barn um we did have the female and we bred them and um unfortunately they decided to have a disagreement yeah. and he killed her which oh, is just no. and it, it, they'd been getting on absolutely fine but um he got attacked by um one of the stingrays so he does have a couple of scars on his um on his back but um he's, yeah, yeah he's definitely improved it's, but it's, it's amazing happy. that a stingray would take on a fish of his size but they yeah, yeah because yeah. he was in elliot's tank so that oh, tank, what, that, tank. that with a big male yeah, stingray yeah yeah, yeah yeah and every time we went to fish barn i was like oh yeah we need to get those papatera yeah. with you we need to get them and then it's a great shot there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, this one's great, yeah. Proper great. It's a lot, this is a shot that keeps giving, isn't it? You're like, oh god, you've got another room out there. I mean, yeah, yeah. when you go in the coins, yeah. yeah. What else we got? Yeah, we've got the quarries. Um, yeah, I do love a quarry. Swartz eye quarries. And then um, there's a little gold nugget up in the wood. And then there is, in somewhere in here, a massive um, rural panac, the carpenter I told you about. But He's probably on the wood somewhere, isn't he? Yeah. Making a mess. Do you know what though? He's great though because he, he when he when the plex keep going at the wood, they create these really cool sharp like shapes and yeah, stuff yeah, in the yeah. wood. I think wood always looks better once it's been like got at by a plex. And and they clean it as well, don't they? That's it. You keep know? it nice and like take all the biofilm. Oh, he's down here. Look. I don't know if you have to get the camera down there because he's um he's literally behind these plants. He'll probably come out. Oh yeah, I can thing. just about see his tail. And then yeah. we keep a couple of species of whiptails. We got um. Just a common whip tail there, and then we've got an antenna whip tail, um, which are awesome. They get these; their filaments just keep keep growing. Mm. Where has he gone then? He's normally always on the front of the glass, typically. I think you um, when you went to that guy's house with the amazing, the amazing plec breeder, he had some antenna whip tails and fish pine as well. He did, so, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He's, he's he's one from the same batch. Yeah, oh, he's at the back wall there, just by that plant. He's coming out from the back wall. He's black though. Oh so yeah, see him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you should. You guys should go and check out. Um, it's Martin. His name is. Yeah. Uh, w. I think it's W. F. Plecos. I'm pretty sure he is. I think it's called something like that. Or DM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Sorry, mate. If if that's not your <laughs> name, but I'm <laughs> terrible so, at names. Yeah, so that's right. Uh, yeah, it's and then incredible. I was, um, was going to do a quick feed. Yeah, lovely. Love to see it, mate. Yeah. Because I know that you've got your arowanas and stuff. So I thought. Yeah. Wait, I'm, I'm today. doing this. Says, oh, I want a predator tag. Predator tag. So this, this is, is how I get around that. It's yeah. Live shrimp. Yeah. They yeah. go absolutely mad. Wow, look and go. That's that's when you know your fish are healthy if they're taking food like that, isn't it? They absolutely like the pandas, like you see on the bow, they absolutely love live shrimp. So yeah, that's uh, unfortunately as close as I can get to a predator tank. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they are they are predators, really, aren't they? You know. But yeah, no, they will eat them well. Once we've all got one, they will go around like with a gobstopper in the mouth. It takes a little while to um. To, uh, but even the yeah, tetras. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> they can eat like much bigger things than you expect. Yeah, they're just coming off, aren't they? But they, to be fair, we tend to feed a variety of sizes because Tetra's obviously notorious that they'll just go in and take all the food before it hits the bottom. Mm. So it, stuff like this is quite good because they can't take them as easily and it gives everyone else a chance. Yeah, see, some of them are hide under the stones and stuff, aren't they? And then when the other one gets hungry, they come and get them, aren't they? It. it gives them a little bit of a chase as well, like keep their instincts up. And yeah, definitely, it. definitely. Yeah, I, I've. I've kind of, I've never really done, I've done a little bit of life feeding like this, you know what I mean? But I've never really fed big stuff to my yeah, arowanas. Because yeah. I don't want to get the arowanas hooked on that, and then you're constantly going to buy live food for it. Yeah, so we did it once a week, to be fair. Yeah. Farnham orders it in for us. But it's funny, this big guy, you're watching him, is like, he literally just. He's lovely, isn't he? Locks onto one. Yeah. But he is a bit clumsy, I think, because he's so big, he, he really struggles to catch him. It's actually quite funny to watch. Mm. Wow, yeah, the colours have come out of him as well, haven't they? Look. Yeah, that's the Satana Perka Lilla. When they get their stress spots, I think this one will start getting them. They almost they look, look like, like a army camouflage. Yeah. They're really cool. They, if they, I think I'll put a little bit of that in and then it'll come out. Um, is it, that's what is great about these fish as well. Like They can really change like colour and, yeah. you know. Wow. They're just always interesting. Normally we turn if there was a from your feed, but. Probably got a mouthful of shrimp still. Yeah. <laughs> but here you go, here's a starting to come out. But they can go like black almost, and um, they, they literally look like army fish. He's not going to do it for you now, is he? <laughs> He's got kind of like a peacock bass look about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. You know? um, they're, pretty, they're pretty similar to these Satana Perka but you basically get your your three spot, two spot, and then this Satana Perka One spot, three spot, four spot. So spot. we've actually got all, uh, all of the species of Satana Perka in this house. Hmm. Um, it's like Pokemon. It yeah, is yeah. literally like yeah. I'll catch them all. Yeah. Yeah. I take them Jay's like, oh, I'm going to Wales in a weekend. I'm like, why? She's like, someone's got a stand back lily. <laughs> <laughs> but so, yeah, it's mad. We we haven't been in the hobby that long. Probably only a couple of years. It's a big Started addiction, with like a hundred litre tank. Yeah. And we can honestly say, hand on heart, we haven't had a weekend that hasn't involved going to the fish yeah, shop yeah. or buying fish. Takes over your life. Yeah. Oh no. Trust me. Oh. Oh, my missus goes mental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like Spenny. It's, it's nice that how you both do it together as well, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you don't really yeah. see that often, do you? So. We always joke that like, I'm the livestock manager because I tend to know to like, a lot about you know, a species lot. and um, like... Research and research and over-research. Yeah. Research more, but. I'm always reading the fish book or something. Um, yeah, like, med like, you know, illnesses, anything like that. So normally if someone messages our Instagram, it's probably me you're speaking to. But it's quite funny because everybody assumes that you're a guy because... <laughs> yeah, obviously, like, hey bro, and I'm yeah. like, it's Jay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, yeah, I just message back and I'm like, yeah, dude, like, because it's yeah. just easier to do that than it is to explain who I am. But, because that's the thing, there's not actually that many, you know, um, female hobbyists, really. We're, we're, mm. It is a male-dominated hobby, so... Um, yeah, it's nice to see female keeping fish, yeah, you know? It. Makes it easy for me as well because I don't have to keep convincing them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Normally, when anybody else does the water change, you can do it. Yeah. Well, normally I'm the one going, babe, come on, come on, please buy this fish. He's like, no, they usually can't come on. Yeah, they're the quarry is just They're just literally everywhere. But they're, um, yeah, we got those from Troco. Yeah, nice. Yeah. There's, there's some really big ones in there, some smaller ones. Are they, um, yeah, they're high fins and they're, they're, their fins are just awesome when they put them up properly and stuff. Like, they're probably, they're our favourite quarry. I mean, because they used to have a different, we tried a few different species we had, uh, gold lasers. Oh, there's one shrimp left. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, he's going to get taken <laughs> out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the shrimp. It'll get full quick. Yeah, these colours, I can't believe how they've changed. Honestly, it's, it, mad, it? it's, yeah. an, it's annoying because he's not going fully back, but he will go like, like dark army green sometimes, mm. like if he gets a bit angry at someone. But, um, yeah, it's, yeah, lovely. it's like his hunting colours, isn't it? Yeah, so the pounders as well, obviously, they're, they're, they're a bit stressed and shy now, but they go. I mean, if you what? have a look on their Instagram, mm. completely white. I think I've white, seen them, yeah. Completely white, yeah. But yeah, they change a lot. They go from shades of grey to white to black. Mm. It's funny, when, when we like, first, first started, like, we had like, small tanks and like, nano tanks and stuff, and I've always been obsessed with pandas. Yeah. And then Jay was like, you could buy a fish called a panda wire, and I saw a picture of, of, of one on Google. I was like, we need to get a big tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what happens is you, you buy the, you, you've got the smaller tanks, you buy the fish, didn't you? And you grow them up, you're like, yeah. you need a big tank now. Yeah, yeah. That's what I normally do. Yeah. But this is the thing, like these geos, these fennies and stuff, they're not even half of what they will be. Like the outer fronds, they would get like a good, like probably 
eight to ten inches so yeah. at some point we are going to upgrade again i mean we would love to have a 10 foot tap but we can't physically get it in this house and um we are well, in the if only I knew someone that could take a window out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and um, we are in a rented, rented property, so I think eventually when we buy our own house, like, we will have a full on fish room. That's and, it, yeah, you know, definitely. Wall to wall tanks. Yeah, just keep keep going. It's the best <laughs> way, isn't it? You know? <laughs> Electric Don't bill says otherwise. Yeah. I, I love, I love to. Next, next house I want to do, I want to do a proper fish room, like oh, in the house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like with a door you can close that, and yeah, come in and out. That um, place where it's that stingray place that's meant for a massive tank. That one you say, yeah, oh, it's, it's incredible. Yeah, and then um, this is the one we feature most on on Instagram because you know we're, we're obsessed with the tank, but we actually have a whole other. I oh, know. I can't. Here. I can't wait to go and so, look at that. Um, yeah, you should feature the other one as well yeah. more. You know, know, you should show should, it off. Yeah. Even do like a whole room photo of the whole room, you know. Do you know what I think it is? Is because like I I work from home three days a week, and we sit here on an evening that we see like the fish looking good or they're doing something funny, and and then we film them. So I think we sort of yeah neglect to, to film those guys, but actually mm. some really beautiful fish next door. And we got our little geckos. On yeah, yeah. What's we'll <laughs> 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 He's probably asleep. Again. It's one of those things, isn't it? You start fish keeping and then you go into other yeah. things. It seems like yeah. a natural progression to go into reptiles. Like, I never thought I would oh, have a reptile. I've thought about it as well. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, check him out. So that's our crested gecko. Oh, he's lovely, isn't he? Half, half, half asleep though. Yeah. But he likes to jump yeah, around. He's starting to wake up. There you go. <laughs> Did the fish go mint at him? No, no they to be honest, like, like, they get quite oh, intrigued you, by him. If though. you put that on my arowana tank. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. He's wicked, isn't he? It's like a mini crocodile. Yeah, okay. that little dinosaur. He's loving, isn't he? He changes colours as well. They, they do what's called fire down and fire up. Mm. So he's fired down at them because obviously they're nocturnal, so he's been sleeping. But at night time, he'll go black almost mm. and um, really changes colour. It looks like a completely different gecko. Yeah, he's lovely, isn't he? How big do they get then? Um, He's probably about half three there, I reckon. Yeah, half oh, nice, three nice. Quarters. Yeah, so, so that's that. Terranium, isn't it? It's called terranium, isn't it? Yeah, so they actually prefer smaller houses. They yeah. get like a bit overwhelmed when it's too big. And um, so that will see him throughout his whole life if, if we wanted it to. We have got plans to do him like a really nice big vivarium, maybe like a, um, you know, with a, with a pool with a couple of fish in the bottom and stuff. Mm. But, did, did you watch the, um, the one I went to in, Oh, Tom. Did you watch Tom's oh, tank with yeah, the snake head? Yeah, under the, the, um, yeah, the, yeah, the, the stairs. What are they called? Um, the lizards, monitor lizards. Monitor lizards. Yeah, yeah, he's... he's, he's this re thing would be dinner for that. Yeah, he's re -built, rebuilt the one upstairs in his game room even bigger now for the bigger monitor lizards. Wow. So I've really? got to go and film that again soon. But yeah, that was a yeah, <laughs> big... monster. Let's put him back. I think he wants to go back. Sorry, There's mate. still a couple of shrimps surviving in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they won't last long. To be fair, the good thing with shrimp as well is if they do get full, they will survive for the next few days. So mm. they just eventually get eaten. So they don't like muck up your water quality because they're just. I mean, obviously we only use as here. a treat. They they mm. get um they get a really mixed diet: pellets, flakes, uh, frozen food, obviously veggies. Mm. So. Um, but it's quite a good thing to feed if you go on holiday, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. if they hide about and then the yeah, fish can yeah. pick at them when they're hungry and stuff. That's it. It's funny, we, um, we're we probably a bit too precious over our fish. We went to, um, we, went on, we went on like a city break just for a week. couple of weeks ago and yeah. I had a table in there with our pet cam just facing at the tank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we could check the same thing. No, I know, it's not, it's scary but, when you go away. Yeah. But it always seems to be when you go away that something like malfunctions yeah, or yeah. something, doesn't it's, it? It's the thing that worries me, is like the filters yeah. or yeah, like yeah, something's yeah. going wrong. Well, we, actually had, we actually had a power cut here, you know. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm I remember seeing it, yeah. yeah. Proper, proper power cut and yeah, the tanks were off for like eight hours. Yeah, yeah scary, scary, yeah. With fish so sensitive stuff like the waru, like any single trace of ammonia or nitrate or something, they, yeah. they will go. So it's like, yeah, it's, it's fish you can't mess about mm. with. No. Um, and like, lots of people mess us on Instagram, like, especially about the handy wires and stuff, and they ask like what water we're keeping them in, how we keep them, how we keep them healthy. Mm. And loads of people, they like try to keep the pH low and stuff, which is great to be fair, like if you want to get into breeding stuff, 100%. But I mean, our water here is spring fed so we're out the tap like seven two and by the time it's in the tank it's probably we found like just seven, constant six, like fifty percent water changes and just keep everything hundred percent stable and I mean as you can see they're 
they're very happy. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've seen people who tried to, who are constantly chasing this like ideal pH level. Yeah, but it's, it's not enjoyable. It, then. No. But also, you can't. It's sometimes not achievable. And I think the more you mess around with it, the more it swings. That's what does fish in. So mm. although it's not like the you know technically on paper the correct water, it's so clean. We constantly pump it for the fresh, and that's why we don't mess about with the pH so that we can do that. Yeah. And and it's enough. You know that's what they need. Just clean and healthy and. Um, well, they all seem to be doing absolutely fine, don't they? Honestly, guys, the tank's amazing. I love it. I think it was incredible. Big shout out to India Aquatics. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, they're great, aren't they? Yeah, they're great. Good. Honestly, we're, um, I'm talking to them at the moment about a, um, a tank for the fishery. Yeah? yeah. Actually, well, right. saying that, we might as well. Yeah, should we go and have a look at the fish room then? Calm down the corridor, mate. Yeah, yeah, sure. We're, um, we're living in a converted stable, so like each room used to actually be a stable. Right, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, look at it now, you can see it, yeah. can't you? Yeah. So, this used to be our office. Yeah. This used to be my office. Well, welcome to the office. <laughs> Shout out to Pleco Toast for getting us a sign. So, I think probably when you go to people's houses, right, like they have their like man cave. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, this is kind of like my woman cave because most of my fish are actually in yeah. here. Yeah, So, and it was my office. I can't actually take calls in here anymore because the noise of the filters yeah. and the water will be. That's what happens, they take over. <laughs> And on the camera, everyone's like, why is there like 100 fish tanks behind you? So, um, yeah. so yeah, I normally take them on the, um, in the living room there. <laughs> so um, this is like my pride and joy, like all my kind of favourite fish and stuff in here. This is oh, they're amazing, tank. aren't they? Um, so yeah, we've got um, Geophagus morabilis, which, um, I'm going to turn that one Um it, It's a shame, like, cause at this time of day, the lights always aren't the best, but at night time, they've got this, like, like shocking blue kind of iridescence on them when you catch it in the light they're absolutely amazing mm. so they actually bred and we've got babies in the tumbler here so she's just guarding them <laughs> at the moment so they're going to they're going to come out today actually uh, they're about ready to come out you know you're doing something right when you fish a breeding honestly it's like a brothel in our yeah, house yeah yeah it's never ending like to the point that's why that's we probably right so many sacks, yeah. <laughs> half of them are like for babies and stuff so um and then yeah we've got albino fred finicaras Actually, relatively difficult fish to keep, like because they're quite um, common. A lot of beginners like them, but because they're man-made, um, yeah. they have really bad genetics, issues, yeah. so they are quite difficult to keep. Um, so we've got what else we got in here? We've got Satanopea, but or acuter sets, but they're going to hide. They're all hiding right now. I'll put some food in if you want. Um, we've got a big uh, hyphen um, uh, green phantom in there, but he's hidden. Oh, he's been right Yeah, he's just there. about to come out. Yeah, see him. Yeah, I can see the size of him. See his shadow. Yeah. He's wicked. He, he might come out when you feed. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a bit in for him. These, these fish are normally not the shy ones. Tip of those. It's probably because they've got a big camera in their face. <laughs> <laughs> so this little one coming up for food, that's a Satanopaca mapaterensis. I don't know if that's exactly how you pronounce it. There's a big male. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? You can see his friends now. Wow, check him out. He's amazing, isn't he? He's definitely the boss of the tank, which is why he's the only one with them. Um, oh, he's friends have a business. Yeah, he's incredible, isn't he? Yeah, so he'll get probably probably about another three inches on that. Mm. Yeah, nice size fish, isn't it? They start to develop these big, like, nuchal humps as well when they get mature. Um, so here you go, you can start to see the morabers here. Yeah, they're lovely as well, aren't they? You've got some lovely fish in this tank, haven't you? There's a, a Balzani here, Jim Lo Geophagus Balzani. This little guy here? Yeah, he's only a youngster. We used to keep... Um, big adults but they're a lot more aggressive than people like they're supposed to be on paper very peaceful fish but in our experience like mm. they, they're not yeah. so um we ended up rehoming the big male because he was just a bit too much but he's been really good so far so we're hoping he'll be a lot more peaceful um but yeah they're, they're actually kind of um they come from like uruguay and paraguay they prefer colder temperatures so for half the year we bring him out and he's normally in one of these tanks so that we can turn the heaters off yeah so they normally have like a cool down period which could be like well, we just do it at room temperature, but it goes down to like 18, but they can go much lower than that. Like yeah, so, so he's sub subtropical then, yeah. Yeah, and then in the wind, in the summer, sorry, then he has this like warm up period, which kind of gets them into breathing and stuff. And if you don't do that, they can be quite prone to, to having problems because they really need that cool down period. Yeah. Whilst he's out as well, you know, we're talking about these Titanic Burkers, that three spot, four spot. Oh, yeah, that's the that's, spot. That's that the one four there. spot, four to set. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Look at the orange on him. Three of those now, yeah, it's a smaller yeah. one here, isn't there? Yeah. There's a little one, there's another big one somewhere around the back. 
Uh, what else have we got in there? We've got our breeding pair of whip tails in here. There's, they're both actually down the bottom. Just so. Yeah. Um, so we, we literally uh, had eggs uh, last week, so we've got three day old little whip tails. We'll show you them in a minute. Um, yeah, they breed sort of normally once a month. It's it's really funny to see, like, we spent ages trying to find a man and a female, then we put them in a tank together and like, are they going to breed, are, are they going to breed, and then we yeah. eventually just gave up, we like, oh, we'll just throw them in the tank. Literally a week later, they've had like loads of eggs in the glass. That's what happens when you're not yeah. trying. Yeah, yeah. 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 So. We've got some um, really rare tetras as well, actually. It's the light, we haven't quite found the right light to show these off, so they look brown, hmm. but when they catch the light normally when the window's open, um, so can I can see them. the blue on them, yeah. They, they, they have this flash of blue. Yeah, I see it now, yeah. Some, look. Sometimes you need the, um, the the light from the window to do it. But yeah. The Heterochalax virgilusis, I think I remember like those lines. Um, no, Jay's on the Latin name. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> yeah. But they, they, yeah, they're really uncommon and they're actually amazing. It's just we, we haven't quite figured out how to get the light right on them yet. Mm. And then, um, really random addition hatchet fish, obviously they're not South American. I don't think, are they? Actually, I don't know that. But, I wouldn't have clue, you wouldn't know what I mean. <laughs> um, but they make really good time, like because they're so um, like busy, they, they take the upper like part of the tank, yeah. um, dead peaceful, and I think they're really cool, I think they're a bit like love it or hate it. Yeah, they do look quite cool, don't they? Um, they got a bit of like arowana look about yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. But they, what's quite cool about this tank is I think we kind of got it right because all the geos, like the marabillas and stuff, they go on the bottom. The thread fins are very much mint water and then you've got... Yeah, like, if you look through from the side, you, you can sort of see the different levels. The so albinos are always up at the top. Yeah, yeah. It so does look cool, doesn't it? We can keep it a bit busier because everybody stays out of each other's kind of patch, if, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Well, that's what's so important about tanks, isn't it? You have your, your tops, your middles and your yeah, bottoms, yeah, yeah. don't you? And they've all got to be kind of working fish, so you yeah. want the clear up crew at the bottom, don't you? But with these geos, they seem to be a clean up crew anyway, don't they, really? They, they I'll tell you what, they literally, like now the sand's pretty level, but when they decide to breathe, yeah. they can move oh. all that sand to yeah. one side of the one tank. Side and it's literally like, it looks like a stingray tank. They, <laughs> no sand at all. These particular species actually do our heads in because they're like the diggers. Yeah. And honestly, you'll have mounds, and you think, how has that fish managed to move all of that sand? But yeah, yeah. they do it on a weekly basis. <laughs> it's quite annoying, these ones. Like, I had a, because uh, yeah, it's one of their fixes as well, and I had a spray bar on the tank, and I was like, oh, it must be a spray bar, like, it must be moving the sand. Mm. I took off the spray bar and I was like, how is it still doing it? And then we realised yeah. it's a fish, yeah. <laughs> my ability is going absolutely ham on sand. So, yeah. I, I kept a jag years ago. and um, jag, yeah, 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 massive jag, he was tickling it, and he used to take all the sand over there every night. Yeah. And I'd move it back and he'd do it again. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, running a, an FX6 on this, I mean, you just can't beat an FX6. And we like fill them to the brim with biohome, so there's loads of um, mechanical filtration in there. And then obviously, as you see, like around the UV as well. So th this tank's deceiving because it, it obviously looks kind of fairly small, but it's actually 600 litres. Yeah. So it's a four by two. Yeah, it's two quite quite deep, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah. So yeah, and with the filter, what what are the filters when they're full? They're like 35 litres, maybe a bit more, no? Like, yeah. yeah. 25, 30 litres. Yeah, that you can see the female myabilis because she's, she's naturally a mouth brooder. She's even protecting them in in the tumbler, which is great to see. But yeah, we 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 have let them spawn naturally couple of times and yeah, they can never, I mean, yeah like as, as soon as they start to spit the fry out they just get yeah. annihilated so we're, we're quite happy that we've managed to get those to a point as to where they're regulars now mm. but they're, they're not a, 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 it's they're quite hard to get hold of my and they're beautiful fish so we're, we're super excited that we've got some down we kind of yeah and you've got a few in there haven't you yeah, yeah there must be about 200 in there yeah easy ah oh, very nice so yeah we tend to um concentrate like breeding the rarer rare geos because it's you know, there's some beautiful fish that are just not available to people, and we'd love to see them, you mm. know, in the hobby more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if we could get some marvelous in the hobby, it'd be great. This is another Pokemon fish. Yeah. Jay, Jay's like, I need all the marvelous in the country. <laughs> it's like the Lugia. <laughs> yeah. <Literally. laughs> and lovely. then we've got this tank, which is a geo. This is like a grow out tank. Grow out. Slash a couple well, of all fish. All your tanks look really nice scaped, don't they? You know, you've yeah, done some thought about them, haven't you? Yeah, I do well, try, we try to keep them. We try to use live pads. I mean, on this tank, obviously, there's the poppers at the top as well, and like, because mm. it, it does help keep, you know, pull out some nitrates and things, and um, so we always try to keep keep pads. And with the geos, it's not too bad. I mean, they uproot them sometimes, but they don't eat them, so we can get away with it a bit more in this in these tanks. Yeah. So that's a three spot. Tanapaka Diamond, which probably looks most like a peacock mask. It does, doesn't it? I'm literally about to say yeah. it's tail, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now cool. Oh, the Geo version. Oh, yeah, you've got a separate mirror, haven't you? Yeah, so that's a Tiger 7, 
funnily enough, I had loads and loads of sevens. I went through a stage of four, obviously, I found the pandas. But mm. he's got a sort of soft spot for us. Yeah, he sent he, um, We went to a main head aquatics and they had him in a sump, just listed as just like a normal, like a rocket or something. And he had mm. horrendous hole in there. Yeah, horrendous. It was bad. And like normally, like small ones are like 100 quid, and he was like 15 pounds. Well, they didn't know what he was. And no. Jay was like, uh, Andre, that's a fine seven. I was like, put it in the oh, bag. <laughs> <it. laughs> uh, yeah, he was literally tiny, so yeah, we're going to keep so, it. So yeah, because we, we did have, I think we had five of them, but we have it, and we had loads of other sevens, but yeah, we just, we sort of started to get over sevens a little bit because they can be a bit more aggressive, they do eat the plants and things, and we just. Difficult to breed fish as well. Um, so yeah, because they, they're really bad egg eaters, so if, if anyone leaves, they'll just eat them. Yeah, overnight, it's demolishing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, he's the only one. Well, we've got two more sevens down there, but he's like the special kid, so um, yeah, he gets a home for life with us. He's, he's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, it's difficult to tell you the stock, Nick, because there's so many different there's ones. There's lots, but, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Um, the small ones, these guys. When you go to like a maidenhead, or well, I mean, I'm, I'm saying maidenhead, there's lots of very, very good maidenheads out there, but they will list, if they don't know the species, they will list a geophagus as Cyrenomensis, yeah. which in the hobby is pretty much extinct. They're very hard to find in the wild. Mm. So we've got four in here at the moment, which are F1 geophagus Cyrenomensis. Yeah, they are like rocking horse, mm. you know. They, um, the, we get them from we got them from a guy in Wales and he's the only one in the country with them and you've bred them. Yeah. They've come from um Jens Gottwaldi in Germany. So they're like the real deal and they are literally like yeah, they're like unicorns, you just they don't get imported, don't see them. Yeah. Everything and it's so funny because it's one of those it's the fish that his name is used the most common in mm. the geo world, yet the actual fish that's supposed to be called that is like non existent. Really rare, yeah, yeah. So um actually out of all the fish in our house those are probably the rarest. Yeah. What do they look like when they're fully grown? Do they get to a nice sort of size? To be yeah. fair, they very much look kind of, oh, I'm just them, but kind of like this outer front here. Like they're, they're just kind of a, um, yeah, a kind of basic sort of geo, but yeah. it's they're the probably, kind of story yeah. behind them and, and what they are really. That yeah, of course, special. yeah, yeah. And if they're, they're rare, not they're the rare, aren't they? They're looking at all of them, but they still. Just to have them, it's just, a, it's just an honour, really. No, I, I do like rare fish as well, yeah. so yeah, I know it's like. This is why you need to, you need to get into geos, Mick, honestly. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can have this them. is um, a really rare <laughs> fish as well. This, so this is the male, and there's two females. One of them is blind, unfortunately, I've seen her eye, but they, um, they're called Gymnogeophagus casiguensis. So they're another cold water um, geo, but they, they're, again, they're stupidly rare. I mean, when I got these guys they imported, they were in really bad state. They were so skinny, they had deformed fins, and I think, to be honest, they're stunted now. Hmm. Um, so he's kind of not going to be his full potential, but he's a stupidly rare fish. So oh, he's like, a lovely, he's a lovely fish. Tank, you know, like yeah, he's got some really nice colours on them. So a lot of people see these fish in shops and they don't really look at them properly, do they? But when you start to properly look, you see different bits on them, don't you? And the thing with geos, like you, you see the small ones, you know, they're all brown yeah. when they're small. So people don't realise what they're going to blossom into. That's right, yeah. And like they. It's geos kind of mature late, and then they just all of a sudden one day they're this spectacular thing. So people definitely should give geos a more, more kind of Definitely, well, it's a bit like the Asian arowana. When you kind of get them, mine. So that's what they. Mine, um, that's what a male will actually end up. Oh wow! Well. Look at that. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? Yeah, but well, obviously you you got to put you got to put the time in. The work, yeah. Yeah, yeah the food. Sorry, what were you saying? I was saying um, when I first got my Asian arowana, so um, my. My wife's nan come around and she thought they was um, mackerel. Yeah, that's so <laughs> and I was like, no, definitely not mackerel. <laughs> yeah, just wait, like, give it a few months, and then obviously they change, don't they? It was massive. So yeah, we've got what else we got in here? We've actually got um, little um, Satanaperca leucosticta, which is the other one of the Satanaperca family. This this one here is yeah, it? Yeah, little sort of shiny one. They're amazing. They will get all of these sparkles all over their um, all over them, but obviously they're only young at the moment. If you want to see what they look like. Fully grown. We're um, I don't know if we told you we're the UK ambassadors for the Instagram page Ultimate. Yeah, yeah, I remember you saying yeah. Yeah, I follow them. There's a guy on there called Stan. Shout out to Stan because he is an absolute legend. Like he is a proper, proper, proper legend. He's got a big tank because it's Geo yeah, Valley. Valley, and he's got big Satana burgers in there. Yeah, but it's amazing, are incredible. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, it it, it took us a long time to find them, and we only obviously we've only just recently had those. So yeah. They're only small, but yeah. Oh, what else we got so yeah, there? it's a bit busy in there. That looks good though, doesn't it? It's really good. You can probably get the Colombians out, I think. Because I had all those in the six foot, and the six foot just looks crazy busy. So yeah. I, but they're a nightmare to get out. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I know, yeah. So I was saying about your skate. We, we, we end up 
setting an alarm at like two o'clock in the morning so all the fish are asleep and then we'll just creep in there and just like, start sleeping <laughs> <eating them out. laughs> you oh, are you crazy <laughs> you can't do it you can't <laughs> do we also have well. a fish trap it doesn't get the tetris but if we ever need a sickly that especially if they're being like aggressive or anything yeah they tend to be the ones that will go in the trap mm. for food so we do have a trap which has been like a lifesaver because yeah trying to net fish out of here yeah. so the, the naughty fish is more <laughs> yeah. inquisitive isn't it yeah what else have we got so we've got geophagus pindar um, we've got um, Rio Carte, this one here, so they're very similar but they're just slightly different species. We've got um, uh, Geophagus pantheri, um, which are gorgeous fish. He's got a bit of scarring from, we, we rehomed him and what was really nice is that we already had a female, we couldn't find a male anywhere. We found him and they've bred and we've got their babies in there now, so, um, so yeah. Really um, and then we've got, these are actually Geophagus neandi. These ones here, yeah? yeah. Um, it's a shame so many types, isn't it? I know. Well, yeah, it's mind blowing, isn't it? So that's a geophagus out of front, but depending on the catch location, the fish could be yeah, very different. Yeah. A bit like the um, green and blue phantom plex. Mm. They're basically the same plex. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not a place specialist, but they can change in colour depending on where the river is, yeah. Uh, yeah, so there's like how many different types of out of fronts are there, babe? Too many. Yeah. <laughs> Too many to be yeah. it. I bet um, you could name all Logan, yeah? Probably, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's I'm not going to show the real geek that she's, I have. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing wrong there. But yeah, I mean, this is the thing, like, we got so obsessed with geos that we've ended up exactly that, like, Pokemon, we've got to like, catch them all. Yeah, yeah. Me, yeah. <laughs> but, um, well, it turns into an obsession, doesn't it? I've, yeah, I've done it, yeah. I think until you've had one, you've owned it, you've seen what it's like and stuff. And then I think you slowly narrow down which ones you really like, which is why, you know, in this tent, these are my favourite species. Mm. And then, um, but yeah, there's so many out there. It's, it's yeah, they've all got a lot of amazing different things about them, like the colours and stuff, haven't they? Like that, that male in there, this one here, it's like, it's quite special, isn't it? It's yeah. incredible, isn't it? Yeah. They normally all have long trainers like them, but the, the females, um, I think they, they take quite a while to mature, and I think she's now eggy, so all the males have been fighting a little bit, and you can tell he's tank boss, because he's the only one who hasn't had his trailers bitten off now. Yeah, and I mean, pretty much 90% of all of our fish are wild caught, mm. pure fish, but there's something about the albino thread for Nakara that we've just got a weak yeah. spot for, because like, obviously they are man-made, they're not genetically that strong. Yeah. They're, 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 they're quite hard to Yeah, take, take, take a lot of looking after, don't they? Yeah, they're just incredible, really. They've just got a real presence in the tank. Mm. And yeah. you've got some more tanks here as well then, I'll say, yeah. <laughs> So this is also my tank. Andre doesn't understand this one, I yeah. think. But this is what I call my oddball tank. So it's basically a, lots of bizarre fish. It started off because I have um, an elephant nose knife fish, which again, are really hard to find. And I absolutely love him. Um, is there some food? Yeah, he's just standing in the back. Um, and he, I, I did, I had a couple of them, I've tried them in the bigger tanks, but they just don't get food. Yeah. So they are pretty much blind. Um, they are, uh, they send off like electric pulses, so they kind of navigate through like electric field. Mm. Um, so, because he's not quick to catch stuff. So I put him in his own tank and then, then the sand started getting dirty. So then I got the loaches, which do a fantastic job. Yeah, all space like, like to draw on sand. Um, and these guys are really funny actually, they'll completely bury, you'll think there's nothing in there and then yeah. they'll just pop out. I see them, they're lovely, aren't they? Um, when they start eating, it's, right, it's, just, it's, it's quite funny to watch it. It's just all of a sudden they'll just go crazy. Yeah, yeah. once they sort of smell it, it comes down. So, um, so those guys go. then kind of keep the <laughs> sand clean and then we added the pipe fish, I mean just because to be honest they're just super cool. Um, they are, aren't they? They, they, they? When I first looked at this tank, I didn't see them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, they, they like to um, nestle amongst the leaves and stuff. Um, but they, they are related to like marine seahorses and pipefish and stuff. Hmm. Um, pretty and much they, blind, isn't he? This but guy, yeah, yeah. So he, pretty poor eyesight. But it's amazing because he knows exactly where everything is. Like, yeah. he, his navigation and stuff through his senses and that. Uh, yeah, he's quite mesmerising to watch, isn't he's, he? Here's his, the gang coming out now. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, he's got that long snout and that's what he'll kind of like um, bury into the sand and find food and things with. Like. Yeah, he's like an ant eater. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we had it, oh, I love knife fish, like I really love knife fish. But obviously I can only keep um, one species, in the, well one knife fish in the tank because they don't tend to get on with each other so they mess with each other's electric films. And oh, things, I didn't know yeah. that, yeah, yeah. And they can be quite aggressive. So we've kept like black ghosts and, and other stuff over the years, but this guy has always been my favourite. Yeah, he's a bit different, isn't he? Yeah, the, we um, got him from 
dwarfed, didn't we? Yeah. We were, we just that's, that's incredible shop, isn't it? Oh, we yeah. didn't dwarf, and Jamie's like, oh my god. Yeah. It's called, they're called elephant nose and you can see it like his face does look like Dumbo I think. Yeah. We have got a plan for him when we do, I, I, we'll talk about it in a minute, but when we change the fish room around because he will get a lot bigger, bigger than that. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we've, we've got a cool idea for a tank room. The horse face places are going mad. Yeah, they're wicked, aren't they? Yeah. And they get um, quite big actually. We've got a, an old yeah, one in here, we'll show you how big they get. Because um, we're not we're not normally loaches wouldn't normally be something we would like be that interesting. I mean, your clown loaches and stuff look amazing, but for our tags they don't norm, like you know mm. go I guess. But with these guys, are just there's something about the like, the way they and they and they're, yeah they're using they're, they're working, aren't they? They're yeah. get, getting through the sand all day. And then I think there's so there's glass catfish at the back. Um, they're hard to see, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> you can see them through there. Like. Basically invisible. Yeah. And then we've got a couple of half beaks up here at the top, which just um, kind of hide in, in amongst the plants, and um, they're a bit different. You might see, um, like you can see, like they've got this really long beak, but the top lip is like smaller than the bottom lip. It looks like a guard, doesn't it? Yeah. It's, like, it's kind of, I suppose, it's our version of having a, an arowana. Yeah, guess. yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of get a guard. Oh yeah, yeah, it's wicked, isn't it? Yeah, it's like a miniature guy. Yeah, I can see yeah. the other one at the back. So they just kind of pick off the top because none of these other fish will take food off the top. So they just so every, again everybody's kind of got a job in here. Hmm. No, it's a lovely little setup, isn't it? Nice little tank to Yeah, a lot, a lot of the size of it. Yes, got something. Yeah, definitely. I mean, these aqua one tanks are beautiful to look at. They're very like ornamental, you know. Hmm. We got that from fish pond as well. Yeah, I see, see one set up in there. Yeah. And what's in this one then? So, this is this, this is so another grower. This grow is out. our grower tank. So in here we have. Um, so you know I told you this is of papatera. We had a breed yeah, pair. So this is the fry of the batch we got. And um, so yeah. So like I don't know anybody in the UK that's um, that got them, bred them. So we're kind of really proud of these guys. Um, Apart from Elliot, of course. Oh well, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Um, and then in this little tub is. Um, Probably have to go into the tub. But they're really, really small. Oh yeah, see but they're, they're just a bit too small to go over the others yet. So we're just leaving them there, just feed them up for a week or so, and then they'll be big enough that they won't get eaten. But mm. um, those guys are um, these pants are right here. Which ones are they? Um, the, these pants are right. Oh wow, are so, they? Yeah, so we'll yeah. have some more of those when they grow up. So there's two. Oh, and also in this tank actually, isn't it? The, those the three-day-old yeah, yeah. whip tails. Yeah, um, yeah. They'll be on the so glass like, somewhere. Yeah, they were here earlier, weren't they? Yeah, look at them. There you are. I don't even know who picked them up. They're so small. Just about the same. Yeah, they're you literally three-day-old. Uh, tiny, tiny. It's yeah, nice growing like up like fish, that, isn't it? You yeah. can't, you can't beat growing up fish. Especially like That's you guys have bred them as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. What you say. That's it. We we always try to keep like back some of the ones we bred because there's yeah there's something special about having seen it as an egg and yeah. go all the way up um, oh yeah we well, brought it up haven't you yeah and and then then, it, well they're down here i think it's more babies so we've got these are our um breeding pair of libophera severums they've gone dark at the back but they normally like this uh, like when they breed they go this dark color mm. normally they're like orange and they have bright red eyes a beautiful fish oh, yeah, um, looking. but we let them do it naturally because they they are just obsessed with breeding like that's what they were born to do um they are they love each other there's about literally. probably 80 fry in there really but yeah. i mean like, oh, as yeah, you can yeah, see, see, the, see. Um, the sponge field is absolutely filthy but we literally just like to keep it dirty because we put tiny 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 branch have been there it all gets stuck to the sponge filter and then that's how we feed the flies. Yeah, so they eat, yeah. But then the sponge filters are great though, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, you haven't got to clean them off them at no. all. And yeah. they do a fantastic job of feeding them off. But if, if you look on our Instagram, there's um, there's loads of videos of these live affairs and mouth brooding. It's incredible to watch really. Like, they literally just open their mouth and they suck off, they just suck all the fry Because mm. um, normally seven aren't, uh, they're, they're egg layers, but these guys are the only species of seven more, apart from possibly the tigers, but um, that mouth brood, so they're known as the mouth brood. That's system. hilarious, there's a couple of fry trying to get the glass work. Yeah, see it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's got one yeah. well. And then the tank to the left is, we've got a breeding pair of stovar coys in there. They're Geophagus megastemma, um, which were in the smaller tank, but they were getting picked on because they're relatively new. So they're just in here, just growing out to settle in. Yeah, they seem fine. There, Eventually they? these coys, when they get bigger, will go into the Redfin tank, but they're a bit too big and a bit too small. If the, if the geo's mouse big enough to have them, they'll have them. Yeah, yeah, and you don't want that as well, especially yeah. with their spikes, it yeah. might end up damaging the geos. Exactly. 
But yeah, this tank is normally my gym night tank with the cold water species in, but obviously because these guys were breathing and stuff, we wanted to give them space to do it naturally. So, um, so yes, we moved it around a little bit. Um, but eventually it will have the gym nurse back in there. Hmm. Tell you what, I think those five were like super sized overnight. Yeah. These, these ones here? Yeah, yeah I was in it. Yeah, they are quite a nice size, aren't they? I could barely even see them. There's, there's something amazing about watching, you know, parent fish and we had, in fact, I think we got these one fish by we, did, yeah. we actually, it might not be true, but we like to think it is because often wild caught fish are caught in pairs because they're spawning, they won't leave the spawn site, so they're yeah. easier to catch. And these two just seemed acceptable in, the, in, in when we saw them in fish farms, so we bought them, and honestly, within the first week, they were breeding. Mm. And we think they were probably caught a, as a pair, yeah, well. caught as a breeding pair, yeah, you might be right, yeah, which is amazing that they kind of, if that is true, that they remain together and yeah you don't want to split them up now do you no definitely not but yeah and then the tank above is another one of my tanks so this is another tank we normally have the gymnos in but these are some more of my panduwaru which came from a guy who's had them for a while but um, was struggling to look after them because because they are like mental yeah. sensitive so as, quite you see, as you can see they have got a hole in the head um so they've got a that, well, they had really bad lateral scarring. Well, wow, look at them go though, look. They're crazy confident now. Yeah, I mean, we've, yeah. We've, 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 we've had them for a month and already they're like 50% improved. They're probably always going to have a slight amount of scarring. Hmm. But I think all they need is some good nutrition, good water, and, and we've had fish like those lilla you saw in there that you were filming, they had a really bad hole in the head. I mean, I can show you a picture, it was so bad, and now you can't see a single thing. Yeah. Um, they were kept in a predator tank, and I think that they were having too much protein and stuff like that. So I think once you correct a few things, there's no reason that they can't come back. Um, but as you can see, they're healthy, they, we've got them eating well. That's, yeah, that's they're still a little bit dark. As soon as they literally, as soon as they go in the six foot tank, they'll just go white instantly. Yeah, that's what no, that's what normally happens. I think. I mean, it's it's a shame to keep them in this tank. This tank with the FX4 and it's about 150 liters, but it's definitely necessary after our issue with the cross contamination and stuff. Yeah. We didn't want to risk it. Yeah, although it's, it's things so important like tank like this, isn't it? Yeah, and although the issue we had was because the fish that we put in there were freshly imported, obviously. These fish are about four or five years old and they have been in the country a long time, it still wasn't worth the risk. Yeah. Mm. So what, what we've done is this guy here was actually, I was on, he looks a bit sickly person because he's, um, he's eight or nine years old. And I mean, from our research, Panda's only lived 10 years, so he's pretty geriatric. Yeah. And I think, unfortunately, I think like his old age is getting to him. We think he's got a tumour on his side and it's kind of causing these muscle spasms. And we've had, we've had even a fish vet look at him, like, so yeah, we've, but I think, I think it's just naturally naturally his time. So what we've done is we've put him in here with them just to test the cross-contamination because if anybody's going to potentially suffer, obviously if he's already kind of old and on his way out, it's probably better that it's him. But it's been fine and so that kind of test has been done now, so we'd be happy to put him in. This one here, that's a male and there's a female in there. And the guy who had him before, he's got pictures, they actually spawned. Right. Which I mean, if if, if we could get one pound of in the country, I mean, yeah, I'd, oh, I'd, be incredible, I'd, I'd probably end up selling the tanks. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I don't, I don't have high, high hopes. But it's nice to know that we have a pair, and even just like sitting in here, like in the evening and stuff, and just to sit and just watching them. They've just got such an amazing personality, and they definitely have a group dynamic. Hmm. But they'll um, they'll start to change colour and get wider like, as well. Uh, and warriors took a, took a while for us to get used to because most people like once you have fish, you start to get used to their behaviour, right? But warriors do the weirdest things. They yeah. will do this weird head shaking each other. They will do this thing where they flare their fins up, go sideways, go black, and then shake. And like, you're like is it dying? Like, what mm. is that? What is it doing? But once you get to know them, you realise it's their like weird way of communicating. Yeah. It's like unlike any other fish we've ever kept. They're very intelligent and very like. They're, they are her, um, shoaling fish, so like they, yeah, they constantly communicate with each other, but they sometimes act a bit weird, and it's just just panda language. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you say, you get used to them. My my, um, my chili red arowana and my big RTG follow each other around all the time at the moment. They go to the bottom of the tank and they do this horrendous noise, really? vibrating yeah. noise, yeah, because they're pairing up apparently. Oh. So I've researched really? it, yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know, how, don't know what's going to happen, so I've just got to keep a, keep an eye on it. But yeah, if one of them, like, well, if the female lays eggs, you've got to keep an eye on the male, he goes right, down so and picks yeah. them up, doesn't he? Of course, yeah. Are they male groups as well, which is cool, don't they? Yeah, they yeah, hold them, the male holds them, doesn't he? 
Yeah, yeah but it would be great to, um, you know, to keep updated on these guys and see if we can get them better because we're, we're going to do every trip we can for them. And like I said, we've, they've already made an improvement. So mm. in a matter of a few months, I think they'll probably look yeah. like different fish. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you took photos of them, didn't you? Yeah. Right, mate, it's good water quality. Sadly, I don't think he'll be around. Yeah. That much longer. But do you know what? How amazing to have a fish die naturally yeah. because it's got old, you know, rather than, than anything else. So I think we're. Pretty proud he's had a good long life, even yeah. if it is certainly his time. As you can see, they're like aquatic guys. It's just, that plant's not lasted very long. Yeah, no, it's I, already halfway no. gone. <laughs> now, guys, honestly, it's the whole setup is awesome. I love it. Absolutely love it. Should so be proud of all of it. We've got a um, we've got a plan for this room to get rid of all of this small lower tanks because obviously it's, it's it's a nightmare to keep on top of them all. So spoke to uh, spoke to ND Aquatics, spoke spoke to Dom, we're gonna get a five foot tank here, probably relatively high. We want to try and get five by two by two and a half if yeah. we can get it through the door. Um, and then underneath it we're gonna go two foot tanks probably well maybe two and a half, two foot deep and then have two of them inside cabinets so we can hide them away and use those for like quarantine growing out fry, all that sort of stuff. Hmm. And then this four foot tank will go here, and this is a 10 foot wall, so it'll hopefully spread out. Be one wall, will it? Have one, really nice. Have like one, one it's, visual, it's a shame and then keep the desk. Obviously, like we, we are in a fairly small house in the um, like side of the stable, um, yeah. and you know, we are in rented property, but I think eventually we have like big plans to have big fish rooms. We yeah. would love to sump our tanks, but yeah. It just with the carpets and everything, you know, we, we've I'm looking forward to something in the 10 foot. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, I've got to do that soon. Yeah. Yeah. Got to start draining that down and moving all the arrows. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, for now, I think, you know, we're pretty happy with, with what we've got. Yeah, it's, it's all running really well, isn't it? All the tanks are crystal clear, don't they? All yeah. The fish so are eating well. All of the small tanks are all run off one big air pump. Which yeah. Is down there. Um, all, all spines filters and then got, um, yeah, so down there you've got a big air pump, which is, Pretty quiet to be fair. Mm. And honestly, like sponge filters are really underrated. Yeah. They do fantastic job, oh, no. especially for fry and stuff. So, um, but then everything else pretty much runs FX6s or FX4, even on a 100 litre tank. We, we much prefer to over filtrate, especially with these guys with them, you know, needing good water and stuff. So, yeah, that's massively over filtered this tank. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Honestly, yeah. because obviously, especially with like the hole in the head and stuff, I was like, they need to have pristine water, yeah, so that's I was right. like, I'm just going to put it in Well, water. look, you've just fed that, look, five minutes ago, and it looks like it hasn't been fed. Yeah. You know, that's how it should be. Yeah. So this one's got a bit of tannin in, and um, we put, like, some cacao leaves, although they've eaten the last lot. Just helps just, with their immune system. Yeah, because they but do come from black water. Yeah, it's, it's, it's mad, isn't it? Like, the pandu eyes are, like, pure white, red eyes, absolutely stunning, but when you see and you watch, like, pictures and videos that have been caught, the rivers are, like, Black. Yeah, yeah, right. right yeah. I'm like, yeah. well, that's just such a waste of a beautiful thing. I know. <laughs> well, that's what we were talking about yesterday when I visited that stingray setup. We were talking about the stingrays, and you don't see them in a tank like that ever, do you? In the, no, in the no, wild. No. Yeah, yeah, They're yeah. at the bottom of like, the river basin. Yeah, you never yeah. don't see the, like, the colours of them and all sorts. Yeah. It's amazing how they've evolved over the years and got so colourful yeah. being in such a dark setup, yeah, isn't it? That's it. Like most, well, all these, pretty much majority of the, the fish in this house are from South America, apart from you know a couple of odd balls and, and whatever. But like, if you just imagine like all this different species of, of fish we've got in here from one river, yeah, so I, know. I know it's not one river, but yeah. like one area, it just goes to show the diversity yeah. that you yeah. can get. Oh, it's mind blowing, isn't it? Have you ever been? No, but we have. Funny enough, we speak to Stan about it. Stan <laughs> right. over on UDF because he's very good friends with Jeff Raps, who we speak to a lot now, and Jeff is responsible for the capture and ID of most of the cichlids in the hobby now. I mean, all those years ago, I can't even think of how many years ago it was, he was the one who was out there with his team and was bagging them up, yeah. Catching them and saying, right, we should call this one a GFA. What a job. Spend it, yeah. yeah. So he, um, he had a company over in the States called Tangled Up in Cichlids, which he now doesn't oh, have. That rings a bell, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The only yeah. And then it was time. Jeff Raps and Stan who started the ultimate Dreamfish Instagram, and then it was Stan who messaged us saying about, do you want to be the UK ambassadors because we have the pandas and like. Yeah, nice. It's, just, it's, it's it, it is a massive honour to be fair, but mm. we have spoken to Stan about because he hasn't done a collecting trip for a couple of years now with like COVID and stuff, but we definitely want to do it. But oh, I'd be incredible. I, I, I yeah, you can't say no to that. I, I think Jade <laughs> needs to get over her fear of. 
leeches. Leeches. Stan said that's a picture of him covered in leeches. And <laughs> I was like, no, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> oh, just pretend they're not on you. Yeah, yeah. Just wear a yeah. Yeah. I, I hate flying, I can't stand flying. Oh, really? right? The leeches and like that one bother me. It's just really? flying, yeah, you have to, after a few drinks, come yeah, yeah, yeah. the plane. But there you go. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks so much for having me over. No very worries. Much, very much welcome. Honestly, guys, um, you should be proud of everything. It looks amazing. Thank you. We'll um, love it. Have you back once we sort out the fish? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's it's nice to see like other people and then what they're doing. You know, I've yeah, got a few yeah, more yeah. people. I've got to go and film again because they've got new tanks or new yeah, setups. Yeah, into like that. that. Is it James? Jamie, James yeah. Yeah, yeah. The one with the peacock bass. bass yeah. Insane. He keeps upgrading things and getting yeah, bigger yeah, stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's okay. a few people we've got to go and film. Yeah. And once we get the pounders hopefully good, like, it'd be great to come back and see the improvement on those guys. Yeah, so that's yeah. it, so the tank will probably be, well, Panda. I'll, I'll tell you once you, you turn the camera on, yeah. we're actually yeah. going to go and pick up two more fish after right, this. Right, right. <laughs> okay. But anyway guys, go and give them a follow on Instagram, it's SA Sickles on Instagram, I'll leave the link in the description below. SA but underscore Sickles, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. another guy who's called SA Sickles and it's really hard, so you have to put the underscore. No way. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, oh, well. Well, you've probably got a better page, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but, Hold on, mate. Yeah. Right, thanks for watching, like and subscribe to the channel, ding the notification bell and keep it real, everyone.